Manhattan, I just assumed you, New York. you could have been in New York. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you going to make it back in time in the morning? I have passed through Manhattan before. Yeah, um, yeah. south of Joliet yeah, there. I've, wa- I've driven past. Here's what I like, because that's a small town, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a little big city. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's growing. It's growing. I, I want to say, I don't, I'm not sure what the population is. I can see the sign in my head, go driving into town, but I don't think I ever read it, <laughs> like the actual number, you know. What I love about the fact that there's a Manhattan, Illinois, and that it's like a small place is that they get the best of both worlds because they can live in this small kind of unassuming town where uh-huh. no one will bother them. Right. But then they have the, they, they just sound awesome when they say, yeah, I live in Manhattan. Yeah. Because as soon as you say Manhattan, nobody, everyone's going to assume you live in Manhattan. Well, it's a bit uh, anticlimactic when they find out it's <laughs> Illinois. <clears throat> I told my, uh, when I told my cousins when they were in town, I says, oh yeah, I live in Manhattan. They were like, wow, man, you're doing good for yourself. I'm like, mm, Manhattan, Illinois. And they are like, don't tell anybody else that. <laughs> man, do you, do you have so, a high rise? Well, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a bit higher than the 7-Eleven that's right Right next door. <laughs> um, all right. We are officially rolling. Awesome. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to A Chatter of Fact. As you well know, these are not interviews. They are conversations. And what a wonderful one I have for you. Say your name for the people at home, would you? Terry Hudson. Terry Hudson. By the way, Terry Hudson, the name could be a singer. It could be a songwriter. It could be a director. It could be an action star. That's an all-encompassing name. And... Um, Man, I'm kind of starting to hate you now because <laughs> as I process this, you you look like you could be an action star. You're smart enough to be behind the scenes as well. Um, and then you have a voice that comes across better than mine on this. You could be a radio dude. Um, well, thank you. And why don't you knock it off? Yeah. Because it's, that's, that's a little too much. You know, leave something for somebody yeah. else. All right. So, folks, here's the thing. Here's how I want to. Here's how I want to kick this off. As you guys know, with all the performing work I do and all that sort of stuff, that's great and that's fun. It, I've turned into this guy that uh, some younger artists have come to, and then after the TED talk, um, it seems that I, I I speak a lot, mostly at schools, about how music ties into education. But my main goal is I'm always trying to uh, teach artists what they need to know after they learn, you know, music or singing or dancing, whatever it is. I really want to help the the younger up and coming people. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing it for, I guess, 20 years, but I've been doing it 20% of the time. Okay. You know, right. 80% of the time I'm just working my butt off, you know, to take care of Robbie. Right. 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 No, I hear so you. I'm so proud of what I've been able to build. But then I meet a guy like you and you're like, you're doing it a full time. Just about like you're helping people all the time. You're setting up these camps. You're setting up these things mm-hmm. that constantly lean into educating the youngsters and I, I can tell from what I'm seeing with what you've built there seems to be a, a, a demeanor there seems to be a moral compass there seems to be a cleanliness to it as well as the education um, I'm, yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure that it, it has always been that yeah. uh, clear or direct um, for example that you know my company the performing arts doctor initially I created that name out of spite because I'm not <laughs> I met all of these um, so-called experts that had all these degrees and all this, and they they couldn't simplify the the craft. Really, you know, it, when when they were teaching it, you know, um, as you're aware, like in in college, you have a lot of uh, what would you call it, traditional, like the traditional methods of, you know, um, everything. Right, right, right. Dance, voice, right, acting, everything, and being able to break away from, you know the whatever textbook they were teaching out of or whatever script they have practiced for years and and step back and say is the thing that i'm doing effective um they weren't able to do that so i says okay well i'm going to create this thing that gets right to it so um and and i think that's the you know mastery comes in you know comes off as very a simplistic approach uh yeah. once you actually know the thing that you're doing I'm really excited about this. Let's back this thing up before we get into the brilliance of what you've created. And let's just get into you, man. So okay. where were you born? Where are you from? Chicago, Illinois here. Yeah? yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh. Born here. I was adopted when I was four years old. So uh, to a family in uh, the south suburbs. 
So grew up in the south suburbs uh, with my twin brother. Uh, well, I, it was started in uh, Beacon Hills. Mm-hmm. So it's like Chicago Heights yeah. area. Uh, and then ended up in what is now University Park. It was Park Forest South back in the day. So, yeah, and I, I kind of grew up there, you know. Uh, my twin brother was adopted with me. I got Identical a, twin? No, fraternal. Oh, fraternal. okay. So, huh. yeah, very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, seven, I'd say, well, eight brothers. I had got to count them all because my Whoa. parents uh, fostered over 200 kids in their life. So, yeah, that was that. That was their thing. This makes a lot of sense. This tracks for what you're doing. No wonder you're fostering like hundreds of performers <laughs> with their careers. This, this tracks, man. Mm-hmm. Were you a little pissed that you uh, didn't have an identical twin? Were you, did you feel like, man, I'm robbed. Wait a minute. I, I wasn't. If I'm going to um, have this guy. He should have looked like me. Yeah, we could have caused a I'm lot of chaos. I'm kind of happy fun. that that no. wasn't the yeah. case. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like me and I think there should only be one me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid point. Yeah. Oh man, I didn't, you just twisted it on me. You flipped yep. it, and we've just <laughs> lost all of our identical twin <laughs> listeners. <laughs> um, were you into the arts as a child, as a kid? Or? I I think well, I, it started with you know singing in church, you know, in the church okay. choir. So you're a um, singer. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so singing in church choir, I think that's where it started. And then school choirs and I played piano or learned piano throughout my junior, junior high school year and huh. high school years. I would walk a couple blocks down the street to my piano teacher's house. And I also played cello. So that was a thing. So the combination of being in orchestra, being in choir, being in church choir, and then learning the piano all kind of culminated into this piece that yeah. <laughs> is... So was singing first? Is that? Um, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't remember. So by the time you're like 16, by the time you're like, you know, mm-hmm. a sophomore in high school, are you delving into all those things or did that happen later well, on in college? Well, my freshman year of high school, I went back down to the middle school and assisted the director there with the show choir program. I also started a community group at that time. Wait, how old were you? Uh, whatever it was when I was oh, 16. Uh, you're 16, gonna 17, get 18, some sort so of medal. 15, 16, or, yeah. Some sort of performance sainthood or something. Yeah. I, I created a group. It was called Extreme Perfection. <laughs> so my my hopes are high. Oh, wow. It was n- nowhere near <laughs> anything perfect. Wow. Um, but I think those experiences taught me, you know what I didn't know. Yeah. Um, you know, they say, you don't know what you don't know. Well, I figured out what I didn't know because I wasn't able to get the results that I wanted immediately. So extreme perfection. Yeah. You were not messing around with your titling. Yep. Oh man. Cause like at that age I was still learning it, but I would have come up with something like, I think we'll be okay. Like mm-hmm. that's what we're called. Right. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard about those other guys cross town though? Yeah. Extreme perfection. Yep. I would have never performed in a room with you guys. Yeah. Like, well, man. I don't even know if we had, I think we may, might've had two or three performances yeah. m- tops. Um, and then I, I, I specifically remember one girl that I invited into the group, um, like probably the second year I had it going and I says, Hey, do you want to be in the group? And she says, no. I was like, well, do you think you're too good for the group or something? She says, yes. <laughs> I went, okay. Well, <clears throat> and her dad was also, uh, kind of anti our group, you know, wow. uh, which is fine. But I, again, I took it as an opportunity to learn my craft yeah. and learn all the back end. And things. that girl was a young Jennifer Hudson. Right. <laughs> <She> was, <laughs> I'll show you someday. Well then, so then the journey, man, you started this journey at this level, you know, from a teaching and a helpful standpoint. Yep. Wow. What, what would, were you, were you just that guy? Were you the guy that would help your buddies out? Were you the guy that just helped your siblings out? I mean, um, it's I a nurturing. Because I, because I'm like the middle child in my family, it was kind of, you know, I had the responsibility of, um, you know, babysitting, all that type of thing. My parents yeah. had an in-home daycare also. I should mention that. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, from a young age, I was exposed to teaching and helping and, and all that. And then I just, I found that the music and the arts, uh, was, a a nice vehicle to use, um, to get anything taught essentially. And that's kind of what we're doing now. The reason I get brought in all the time for the, the younger kids is because what I try to let them know is, listen, if you, if you want to be a singer or songwriter or whatever, you know, the more you know about the world, 
the yep. more you can do this. It's just like some guy who goes to the gym and wants to work on his shoulders and work on his, his biceps or something. You know, you might hate math class, but right. if you can do your best at math, it's going to train a certain part of your muscle. And maybe you'll never use algebra again for the rest of your life. But in 10 years, maybe when you're learning piano, there's something about what, you, what you've strengthened your mind toward in this one area that might actually help with notes. And it's so interesting. And that's the reason I get all these speaking engagements for the young, young kids, right. because by the end of it, the, you know, you're trying to basically say, just study hard in school. Right, <laughs> because right. the more you know about everything, the more you can write about anything, yeah. you know? And so it's, it's a weird... And you yeah. can perform from that space and perform from that experience. Yeah you know, and incorporate that. Uh, oftentimes I work with groups across the country and, you know, they they have the ballad, so the songs they just stand and sing and they're not connected to it. And, and just saying, Hey, we're all human. You know, we feel each other, we, we connect to each other. So if you're not connected to the song in any way, I'm not telling you how to be connected to it, but if you're not connected to it, then we're not involved. We're not invested in your performance. Oh, wow. Oh, man, I'm so glad you're, you're working on this because I think it's the kind of American idol culture yeah. has unfortunately affected the, you know, the younger singers where it teaches them to try to learn all the tricks uh, minus all the emotional content. Right. I'm so glad that you're teaching, you know, mass amounts of people that concept. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, we all, we need the fundamentals, you know, you got to crawl before you walk. Yeah. Um, and I, another thing is, you know, the being able to appropriately um, add artistry to to your work prior to um, mastering the whatever that craft is. Yeah. Um, a lot of I think what's going on now in in the performing arts world, especially like the American Idol, all this, they're they're adding the artistry to poor fundamentals, which is hurting them in the long run. So at least I try to focus on here's the basics, here's the one, two, three. Now we can add the ABCs on top of that. Um, as long as you have a solid understanding of the one, two, three, you know, you're going to have to write a book eventually, man. That's where <laughs> this is going. You're going to have to write a book. This is good stuff. Okay. So let, let's, let's keep backing it up though. So you're already kind of in that mode when you're, when you're at high school level, how does that progress for you personally as an artist? What mm -hmm. are you doing? And then are you still finding ways to teach people before we get to what you're doing okay. right well, now? Okay. In, well, in the, so high Give school. Give me the journey. Yeah. Yeah. So after the first year. Um, I also dabbled in technical, technical aspects of theater. Mm -hmm. um, so we had like a, what was it called? Tech club or crew or something that handled all the support for the choirs and bands and all the performing arts yeah. programs. So then I, I, I did that my entire high school uh, career. Now, were you talking sound, sound lighting? lights, all of that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so kind of, again, it was a learning process. You know, I learned from people who knew what they were doing, how to do those things. I played, um, piano or keyboard at the time because we had synthesizers. I played synthesizer for our girl show choir in, you know, during the, in the, what would you call it? Pit. So the, you can play play. Yeah. All right. I can write, arrange, compose. I'm a published uh, composer. Of course you yep. are. Yeah, 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 right. Sure. So I was a, a member of our mixed show choir uh, also for three years. So, uh -huh. and so I, so I sang and danced in one group. I played for the other group, and then I did all the technical behind the scenes stuff for the program uh, with a team of other students. Now, wait, and I might have lost focus here. Was this? Is this still high school? Yeah, this level? is still high school level. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Man, so, oh man, did you have any aspirations to be that guy, either whatever, a singer songwriter or the guy in the lead on stage? And you know, because um, you still look like you're freaking 28, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know that it's I. that Manhattan water. It, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the local pub. <laughs> Yeah. Did you did you have any of those aspirations I, while doing all this? I don't know that that was ever a thing for me. I just remember that I enjoyed. I enjoyed the experience of performing and helping people and creating, you know, a, a little world within a world for people for two hours or three hours uh, where they can come and live vicariously through you. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, never really had any aspirations to go on a Broadway or anything like that. I was more interested in breaking this thing down and figuring out how it worked and wow. then recreating that 
you know, based on whatever research I needed to do. Man, oh man. So then where does that take us when, when you're out of high school? You know, what, what are you doing? What do you study? Went, went to college, went to Millican University for vocal music education and political science. Nice. Um, there I performed uh, in the choirs and all that theater program. Well, what, tell um, me a little bit about your dance background then. Did you train or did you? Da- well, so I started dancing literally in show choir in junior high school. Okay. <laughs> and I started choreographing my first year of high school. Um, so two years after that. Wait, a, okay. Now let's back this up. <laughs> how, how do you master that? Because I, I was brought up in this uh, look at Jackie Wilson kind of world. And mm-hmm. then even when I was younger, I would watch like what Bobby Brown was mm-hmm. doing and I would try to kind of make it my own. Okay. When I get to college, I started doing the show choir thing. Okay. That was my first time dealing with hardcore choreography and okay. then i started choreographing little moments in the mm-hmm. band right but for you to delve into it you sound like you sound like the actor who when they're on set is learning because they're working with like one of the greatest directors and you're pulling that well, and then in two years well i think i mean and i know we're at, not at that point in the conversation yet but yeah. it's kind of <clears throat> what i ended up doing in the performing arts world is you know, like for my technical theater background, um, for lighting design, for example, they told me this particular person is the best lighting designer out there. So what did I do? I hired that person and I sat right next to him and whatever they did, I wrote down, I asked questions. So guess who I did not hire again after two or three gigs when I knew what they knew. (laughs) Man, oh man. So, I mean, I feel that at least my lighting design is better than his now. Because once you give me the fundamentals, you know, I'll delve in and I'll figure it out from there. But again, it's, it's choreography with lights. It's, you know, how do you create that mood or whatever? But I think the choreography aspect back in junior high, high school, I, I just, I mean, we didn't have, um, like today, TikTok and all that, where you can go and, quickly learn to dance so yeah. i'd i'd go watch the award shows and i'd go watch we had music videos i don't know if you remember mtv right. when it was <laughs> so, actually music videos correct well i'd go and i go okay cool i'm gonna learn that pattern and then i'm gonna figure out how to modify it to fit my needs for whatever i'm doing um and then i met other choreographers just similar to the lighting design who I said, hey, how do you do this? And I remember doing, I researched it, how to become a choreographer. <laughs> and it turns out that you just are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, you, if you teach a step, you, that's what you do. You've just become a choreographer. Yeah. So, <laughs> true, yeah. so the crazy thing is I was like, all right, well, that's not good enough for me. So I spent a lot of time working with other Chore- professional choreographers that you know came in and things of that nature and, and picking their brains how do you design your work and and so on and so forth and I, I I think throughout my high school career I was able to flex those skills because I had that other group extreme perfection that I was able to use kind of as a test dummy all right will this choreography work so when I got to college um, I felt well and en- or confident enough to sell my services to other groups, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the, my high school career, I thought, okay, I'm still learning, still learning, still learning. Then I thought, okay, how do I bump up my skill set? Well, I gotta, I, in order to be a quote unquote professional choreographer, someone has to pay me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I started marketing myself as such. And, uh, I got a f- my first couple gigs and they were not great, <laughs> you know, um, and but I learned again. You must have been able to sell at a very young age because you know you, Milliken. You go there, you go to the university. In those days, like you were saying, it's not like you have YouTube videos you right. can reference to them. You're stating your case and selling mm-hmm. what you have. That's pretty tough to get the gig, sort of sight unseen in a way, right? I I think that. Um, well, I know that a lot of the books that I would read throughout junior high and high school were, I remember one book specifically, it was called uh, How to Speak So That People Will Listen, oddly <laughs> enough, because I thought I'd like to persuade people to do what I want, right? Yeah. So I think I think those types of books, the self-help books and things of that nature that I read helped me to sell myself and sell that whatever that service was. So basically, it's kind of like, let get me in the room and I will do the thing. That's <laughs> you know? amazing. So because when you're when you're in that that's pre digital age we're talking about, mm-hmm. 
So you had to just hit a library. You had to, yep. man. And it, and it almost makes you feel as if you're consuming. I don't want to sound like now we got to be careful mm-hmm. that we don't sound like a bunch of old dude, a couple mm-hmm. of old dudes on rockers, right? Right, right, right. In my day, but I think that you're going to consume the information in a different way and a little more deeply uh, because of this sort of weird quick click world we live in. Mm-hmm. I think even when people are researching, they're researching halfway and then clicking to the next thing, clicking to the next thing, because once you look up one thing on a Google or wherever, right, the- a million things pop up, you know, whereas if you go old school, go to a library even today, you're going to get these two or three books, but you're going to have mm-hmm. to delve into the book. It's, yeah. it's a different way to consume the information. Well, I do remember now that you say that, there was a VHS tape um, by John Jacobson. Are you familiar with him? I know the name. Okay, and I forget what commercial he was in, but he has the double dream hand, jazz hands. That's what he's known for nationally and I think internationally now. Hmm. But he had a VHS tape out there, and it was called... Um, riser choreography or something like that so i went okay this is a good start so i i watched it and excuse me i watched the uh vhs over and over and over again took my notes and i went okay so now i have a a a foundation to work from when i'm choreographing shows and things of that nature so it was pretty cool and now my buddy mike weaver has a whole uh a dvd program that is today's modern version of what uh, John Jacobson did. I feel like I know that name as well. Should I know the name? Chicago. Okay. Okay. So that's a familiar name. So as you're doing all of that research, then how does it, how, how do we keep building toward where you are now? I I don't want to skip much though. Right, right, right. So Um, how old are you when you're, when you, when you were working off of that VHS tape or what year were you? That was high school. I would, I would say, yeah. You were enterprising then. Freshman, That's sophomore year. Really impressive. So I just, I was bored at home, so I, I needed to do something. So I lived in the choir room, you know, wow. um, and I learned as much as I could. Our director at the time uh, did our, did the choreography for our group, and I wasn't too impressed with the choreography he was doing, but I, and I, I remember thinking, if he can do it, I can do it, you know. And back then, you're like, this is an old guy, you know, and he was like 30 years old, you know, <laughs> you know, this old guy can do it. I can definitely do it, you know, and I remember choreographing something for uh, some performance. So we had a, this thing called Showtime at the end of the year at the uh-huh. high school level, and I choreographed it. And I remember um, a couple of my friends saw the work and said, who did the choreography for this? And I said, me. They were like, you did this? Because <laughs> like, it was good. But I did my research. I did my homework. Wow. Isn't it hilarious? I remember being in the first grade thinking the eighth graders looked like adults. And I remember right. being 18 thinking 30 was 60. Right. And it's weird as we approach age now, I'm like, wow, is that what I thought of? Like, I must have thought right. of, like young Robbie would have looked at me now and probably thought like, oh, that guy's going to be dead soon. I yeah, guess. right, right. <clears throat> My funniest story is I, um, I was dating, like right when I graduated high school, I was dating this girl who went to IU Bloomington and she was watching a performer. Uh, it was during some kind some Indy 500 or something. I was down there and we're watching this guy on stage. He was all over the stage. I feel very bad that I can't remember his name. But anyway, he was doing a great show. It was awesome. And at one point, he just gives a little speech. You guys just live right. Do what you do. Look at me up here now. I'm 32, and I'm still jumping all over the stage. Mm -hmm. And 18-year-old Robbie was thinking, oh, that guy is old. Right. And then when I got to like 28, 29, I remember thinking, okay, there's no way. I have to really rethink my life here because Mm -hmm. when I'm like 32, 35, no one's going to want me to front a band and be that guy, right. you know? And then as like 38 rolled around, I'm like, well, when I hit 40, I have to really readjust, you know, mm-hmm. and nothing. And then 45 hit. So it's interesting in the performing world, you know, certain aspects of it, at least what I'm seeing is that I don't know anything there. I'm going to have to just keep doing this mm-hmm. until someone tells me to stop. Right. right. Because it's, it's interesting. Right. But right. that perspective when you're 18 is, mm-hmm. is weird though. Yeah. Anyway, that old former <laughs> choir director of yours, that old ancient 30. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> interestingly enough, now, you know, we all work together in the same industry and they come and judge uh, competitions and contests for me. They'll actually be at the intensives this summer. Oh, that's great. Right. My, I, I think you, you, I don't know if you were on the call still last week, uh, but Camille Brinker is my former junior high school 
choir oh, teacher. Wow. Will and, I be able to experience some of these folks on this thing? Talk to some. I'd love yeah, to chat yeah. with them. Oh, that's great! Yeah. Wow. Um, and then uh, my high school choir teacher, who will actually be there as well as a, a visiting instructor. So. It's kind of cool that they're still involved in my world. Yeah, now I don't think I want to pick any of their brains artistically. I'm just going to ask for crazy stories about you. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> yep. That's how it works. Okay, so let's see. By the time, so when you're getting into college, after having this vision, I love the way that you're 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 educating yourself, but then at the same time, all of your education seems to be leaning toward feeding others because you're doing these group projects. You're leading. You're directing. You're choreo- being a choreographer. Um, when you're getting to college, what was the what was the plan then? Like, what were you thinking? Well, I, I really well. One, let me tell you about my college deal. <laughs> so I was offered um, a scholarship to go to any state school for free. Now, what got you and, that? What was um, it? upgrades and I don't know. I think I applied for some sort of grant or something. Just high five me right <laughs> on. Come on, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I was in a weird spot where I didn't like being given things so i said (laughs) i'm gonna go to a private school um, and i'm gonna pay for it myself thanks so i turned down the offer (laughs) to go to any state like an idiot like like now i know that's an idiotic move (laughs) then i didn't you were a proud young man yeah and i says yeah i got this i'll figure it out and i'm still paying for college (laughs) (laughs) there's another lesson for you young folks (laughs) yeah it was kind of you know uh i didn't take uh i didn't uh, follow the uh, you know example of smarter people at the in, time man, you intrigue the hell out of yeah. me man all right so okay but then when you're going to college yep. like what was it was the plan to be like a choir director or a, yeah like, what was i wanted the plan? i wanted my high school director's job and ultimately i got that you know in the same school district yeah and then some you know, you know but, um yeah. and is so that what you did I, really is yeah that, i did that out yep. of college yep. wow um and that was that was my only goal at the time it was to go come back and teach in that very same room, you know, what, you know, what my director taught. Um, and then I did that and I went, okay, I want to do other stuff now. Um, I started giving, doing private voice lessons. So voice was my primary instrument, I guess I would say, uh, as I was going through college and all this, uh, I still, I still dabbled in the piano and arranging score, you know, score arranging. Is there stuff recorded on you that we can hear or? Um, yeah, I do have some stuff. Yeah. I mean, anything that's like, you. okay. Is there anything out there in the world that our listeners could hear or anything? Um, or? YouTube, I think yeah. there's some. All right. yeah. Shoot, shoot yeah. me a, yeah. shoot me a link and I'll, yeah. 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 If, if they, would they look up your name? Yeah. Just my name. So if, yeah. if you get on YouTube and look up Terry Hudson. Yep. You might see some stuff yeah. or hear some stuff. Yep. Yeah. And there's some old uh, old footage of me performing back uh, in the day too, you know. All right. You, you so, we we've, we've we've ripped the seal now. There are yeah. gonna be some people looking after yeah. we talked about. Well them. the interesting thing for <laughs> like our intensives coming up this summer, uh, yeah. we're talking about having a staff performance. So it'll be me and my five uh, assistants and we'll <sighs> we'll uh, we'll do a performance, just kinda show people, hey, we know what we're doing. We can do it too. I want <laughs> I wanna circle back okay. for a second. To, to dance, how deep did you have to go into the dance? What, how hard? Um, I, the, I only feel like I, I really didn't delve into the dance thing really deeply or heavily until after I felt like I had mastered being able to teach voice. Um, at, and, and so I taught thousands of voice lessons. Like I was doing a uh, hundred students twice a month, you know, so at 30 minute sessions. Wow. And so it taught me my craft. I learned, I was just as much learning as they were. After that, I said, okay, I got that part down. Let's delve back into this dance thing. And so I started taking private lessons with private instructors that, you know, wouldn't go out there and say, Hey, you know, the choreographer you're hiring comes to me and learns all this stuff, you know, but Smart. I felt like I needed some sort of formal education to say, um, Hey, I am a professional choreographer. So I started, I hired, you know, again, just like the lighting guys, I hired the best of the best. And I said, okay, well I can do all of that. Got it. You know, and it's, 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 uh, the, the artistic creativity that you have, uh, makes it really fun, but also being able to know that, there's fundamentals to everything, you know? So right. like 
you can learn at home martial arts, dance, anything, yeah. but then you need to like at some point explore the basics. It's so yeah. important. Yeah. So, and I think one of the statements that one of my professors used to make was, um, you know, I'm going to teach you the rules so you know what they are. And when you break them, you know how and where you're deviating from the norm. Yeah. Oh, man. I could talk to you for like hours, man. Seriously. Oh, we're going to do mm-hmm. this. And then yep. one of these days I'm buying you uh, some cocktails nice. in, in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. Because I want to I'm going to talk to you for 17 hours. Nice. <laughs> because the concepts, it, 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 there's so many ideas that I've had and that I've used for my own career. And mm-hmm. again, like I said, it's just man, I feel good about that and I'm proud of it. But then I meet someone like you and I just feel like I'm not doing enough yeah. because, you know, I think I taught 20 ki- kids a day of voice lessons okay. twice a week. You okay. know? Like, well, I taught like a hundred. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. man. All right. So, okay. So you're mastering that stuff. And then at some point then, how long you're the choir director? Well, I started actually. Milliken had a group called uh, Singing Blue. Okay. Well, it it was the show choir for that school years ago. I remember seeing a video. Uh, it, again, it was a VHS of that group. So part of my goal when I was there was to bring that group back. So I brought the group back as an extracurricular. And I remember doing the auditions for it. And everybody thought I was a teacher at this college. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, But I wasn't. I was just another student and running this program. But when you said extracurricular, I mean, was there funding for that? It then? was a student activity. You know, ah, like, I see. You, I see. you know, okay. just so uh, it was, I don't know how, I, I'm sure there was funding provided by the school or something. I don't remember. Where, where are we in college here? Are we a junior? Are we a sophomore uh, when you're doing this? Freshman year. Who are you, man? <laughs> throw my shoe at you. <laughs> All right. So fine. Yep. So got that going yeah. again. So by junior year, you're building yeah. homes, shelters and stuff in foreign countries. Right. Probably, because... <laughs> okay. So odd, oddly <laughs> enough, uh, I, I was a general contractor and we were building um, custom homes. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, before the market crash. I'm not so even was, making yeah, jokes yeah, about yeah, you anymore because yeah, then yeah. you're going to just. Yeah, well, well, actually, I did. Way, yeah. I, I actually did that. Yep. This is insane, man. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to make a medal and give it to you before we leave oh, today. excellent. Yeah, because somebody <laughs> needs to give you a medal, man. So, okay, so freshman year, you're building this thing. Mm-hmm. So what I'm curious about, though, is now that I see, you know, we hear about you honing the craft and learning so much. So you get out of college. Is the mm-hmm. first job back at your school doing the... Um, no. Okay, what's the first... I think the first job was actually, well, in... I guess we had to back up to college a little bit. So in college on the weekends, I was the choral director at a church in town um, or right outside of town. Nice. So there I was able to also hone my skills. Yeah. Uh, I would arrange the Christmas cantatas and all that stuff um, custom for the group. And I always got a lot of slack because he says, you're the only person who we know that writes eight part harmonies for six people, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't think the group was that small, but I did, I wrote those, but I didn't understand overtones at the time, but I knew that if I had them sing these certain chords, the notes I wanted to hear would just magically appear, you know? So you would look at the say, say there's six people and you would hear eight parts and you're like, well, how is that? possible yeah i know now how it is but i didn't know then and they were good enough to to handle it like who you were you know um sure all right all right there it is there it is uh it, it, listeners his expression said everything you just you just go with that yeah uh, all right so when college is done mm-hmm. is that when you headed right back to the choir job or no, no? i was dabbling in uh, the construction world. I think I thought that's the thing I'm going to do. But throughout my college years, I was being hired already to design shows for other groups. Um, How'd you get the construction background? um, I worked for, and that goes back to high school, junior high. I worked for a Polish family that um, actually sold food at festivals, but they would teach they would have little projects for me on the weekend sometimes and i'd go over and kind of help them paint or help them build this or that yeah um so that was kind of where that came from and then um i got to a point where i you know people were calling and saying hey can you come paint this can you come build this or whatever and then again it was one of those things where i went 
I don't have enough information or knowledge about this thing that I'm doing. So I started to hire other contractors who knew more than me. Yeah, now I really hate you. And now <laughs> you've ruined this episode for my wife because I'm not going to let her listen to this. Okay. Because <laughs> here's the thing, listeners. When somebody's artistic and when they really... It takes so much. It takes so much work and so much dedication to hone that craft and to learn about one or two. And then I've got a guy like you that's learning four or five. Mm -hmm. Typically, artistic folks aren't the people that you want to fix your table, you know, or do mm -hmm. some work around the house. I'm pretty good at hanging a photo. I've got a leveler, yeah. right? But my joke <laughs> around this house is if anything's really broken, uh -huh. You're you know, I say, someone. yeah, hell yes. And <laughs> yep, I would say, yep. well, should I get my tools? And she's like, just shut up and get right. the phone, right? So the fact that you can also do that, yeah, man, I'm really torn. I, yeah, I, I hate, hate you. Yeah. <laughs> And now my wife can't listen to this because if she does, uh -huh. she's like, oh, oh, oh. really? Ah. He's artistically yeah. doing more and he can build a house. <laughs> and she's going to throw me out. So, you know? yeah. Yeah. Are you so, single? Because my wife yep. might call you after this. <laughs> Get used so, to this place. It might uh -huh. be yours after the episode airs. I get it, honey. I get it. He's a good looking dude, so. too. <laughs> Damn it. So, all right. <laughs> So we're delving into, you have, you have so, both yeah. areas covered yep. to fall back on, yep. which is great. So about a year after, um, I went back and started working at the school as well. So I do remember hiring. Wait, in what capacity? What were you doing? I was the assistant director at the high school, and I was the director at the middle school in my town. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, I remember hiring my students in the construction company so that they could raise money to go to like Florida trip or whatever it was. So Brilliant. they kind of had both things. So they, they got to come and help build a house and they made money for their trips at the same time. So it was kind of each thing kind of helped the other thing. I picture you having them like run the drill and the hammers like in time. So it's actually some sort of orchestrated right. <laughs> when they're putting up a wall. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. That's that's cool. In my mind, that's how it's playing out. So yep. your life is a musical to me, yeah. man. Okay, so then that's smart because as we all know, sometimes you do, you, you can find great work in the arts or sometimes, you know, you, you have to fall back on something. You know, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. a tricky, you know. Well, again, it was, I was in that weird spot where I didn't like asking people for things. So I didn't want to, I, I wasn't looking for sponsors for them or anything like that. If people just volunteer say, hey, we, we want to give you guys this to help you get your trip done fine so i created opportunities that i knew that they would generate revenue that we didn't have to ask anybody for yeah. you know and sure. and we're building a house so boom <laughs> you know so again it was that's a life skill that, that they're learning if they don't do anything else and with music you know yeah because it's a tr you know it's funny because when i talk to especially the younger performers you know when when i'm seems like when i'm talking to older performers it's it's a lot about life direction and stuff but when i'm talking to the um you know, after the fact i mm -hmm. guess but the younger performers i'm always telling kids figure out what you love yeah and attack it and see if you can make a living out of yep. it and if you can't well you have the best hobby in the world yeah. because i i attacked this world and life is good Yep. But if, if it hadn't worked out, if I hadn't become a corporate singer or whatever I am, um, I would have been singing at some bar every uh -huh. weekend because I love it so much. Yep. You know? And that's, I think that's the key, right? Because as yeah. long as you're honing it and you're passionate about it, well, if well, it doesn't work out, you have the best hobby. Right. Well, and, and, and I'm a believer in, and I, I teach my students this, I said, you know, even if you don't know what you don't want or want or whatever yeah. it is, it's just pick a thing, give it your all. And if you don't give it your all, you, you'll never know if it's for you or not. You may give it your all and go, nope, I don't want to do this anymore. But if you if you teeter on the edge of it, you're never going to know what you want. Yeah. You Listen, um, I'm going to I'm going to need you to quit taking um, something I say and making it sound better <laughs> <laughs> on, on my show. You have to knock that shit off right now. Yeah, that's oh, man, that's beautiful. You make me cry. That's beautifully put you know so. that's that's the next level stuff yeah that's great god man dude i like what you're doing i love the fact that there's there seems to be this equal parallel between um you being passionate about what you're doing but also it's it, you're giving constantly everything you do is a lesson you know i've learned like 14 things so far nice <laughs> <laughs> i'm a better man already because so okay here's what i'm really curious about so at some point you're working with the students, you're doing this thing. Mm -hmm. What 
tell everyone the name of your company now the performing arts the doctor the performing arts doctor what is it that gets you to this next level of thought where now you're going to do this what 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 made that calling happen what what went on i think it was the fact that the thing that i was doing did not seem like real work and i wanted to le- legitimize it by in in some way um and i thought well i don't know how to do that other than creating another company and making that company the thing. Um, I just, I broke everything down, all the aspects, the singing, the dancing, the technical theater, and I practiced it and practiced it and taught and arranged and all this. And I thought, okay, how, how do I now take everything that I've learned and help other people do this same thing? And, uh, that's kind of where the company came from, you know, and, and like the conversation with one of my instructors. So Carol was, kind of the new Broadway. So now what tell is everyone that? who Carol is. Oh, Carol Diltz is one of my instructors. So she teaches, uh, uh, or she's taught with, I want to say Giordano, uh, dance, um, Joffrey. She's with A&A ballet now. Um, yeah. And so, no and, slouch. And, right, right. <laughs> and a couple, I mean, she teaches at multi, I think she's also with IBT, uh, in okay. Indiana. So, but now how did you meet her or how did you come well, to know her? Well, I was doing a gig in Guatemala City for ANA Ballet. I was the technical director. I got hired to go out and make sure that the show was lit and, and it sounded good and all right. that. So I went down and I instructed this team. She was um, the person editing the music for the company. We had never met in person. Um, but we would correspond via email when I needed edits and things of that nature. Well, I had a conversation with the director of A&A Ballet, um, and I told him, I says, you know, I'm looking for an assistant because, um, you know, I think whatever assistant I had at the time was uh, was sick or had, uh, had a family function or something. At any rate, he says, oh, I got the perfect person for you. And he gives me the name, Carol Diltz. And I'm like how do I know that? And then I, you know, when we talked, I was like, Oh, you were the one doing the music. And she's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was at a gig in Missouri and I was assistantless, you know, and it's like a two week gig. So he connects me with this girl. I call her up and I go, Hey, I need you to come work for me. And she's like, when I'm like now. (laughs) So I got her plane ticket and all this flew her in First time we ever met, flew her in to this gig, picked her up at the airport. The next day we were teaching like we had been teaching together for years. Wow. And the students a couple days in said, um, how long have you guys been working together? You know, because it seems like you've been working together for years. And I says, since yesterday when she got off the plane. And they were all like, what? <laughs> That's magical. So, yeah. And, and it's very rare that you find that connection when you're bringing someone in to help you with something that's a little foreign to them, you know. What was ground floor like for the performing arts doctor? Like, what, what was phase one? What did you do? Um, and folks, this is what's going on now. This is what this man has accomplished. This is what you want to look up. They can go right to the performing arts doctor.com, right? Look it up. You're going to be very impressed. I was blown away when I looked at it. It's just, it's very inspirational as a non-musical person. You guys can look it up because it's just so interesting and fun and you can share it with anyone artistic that you might know. And for you artists out there, I know, you know, a lot of you guys floating out there look at it because if you fall into the right category for it it's just something magical and something great to be a part of we'll get into what it is Mm -hmm. now which is just amazing but Mm -hmm. i'm i'm interested in fact before we get into ground floor we're going to give you guys the eye blink one quick second for you guys here's your eye blink okay there you go that is your eye blink uh it was like seven minutes for us to you know grab more coffee and stuff and uh, you guys got your blink. So anyway, as we took our little break, the defense portion came up. I, I don't even know what that means. Well, Self-defense, is it? Well, what ha- there's, there's more to the story, I guess, the ra- rabbit hole, right? Here yeah, let's go. do it. Uh, so after Milliken, uh, a, a friend's dad approached me and said, hey, I, I'm interested in you know uh, starting a business with you. And I went, okay, well, what is it about? And he says, he says it's going to be lie detector tests. And I went, huh? You know, I didn't know much about it. I went, well, I mean, okay, what it what it does it entail? So it, it required us to go through. I believe it was like a three month training at a school uh, that was put on by a former uh, Department of Defense uh, instructor, and uh, they taught you how to, you know, run lie detector tests. 
you know. People still do lie detector tests. Yes, actually, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that was still a, a thing. It, it's heavily a thing, especially wow. when it comes to the nation's security. So, um, so I started, I went to school, did that. Um, the CIA wanted us. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> And folks, we're going to get back into the right. performance arts, do- yeah. arts doctor. But ho- wait, wait, I, I, my brain's exploding here. Mm-hmm. I, I, so this isn't just like some petty theft or felony. This, no. this is on a, like a national yeah. level. So correct. And so our director. So was you're like James former... Bond on top of all this crap. <laughs> our, our, our director was former NSA, CIA, Army intelligence. You name it. Um, so, you know, his class was looked at by the CIA to say, Hey, are you guys interested in coming to do this for the federal government or you can go out and do it privately? Well, at the time it wasn't an attractive thing, um, to go and work for the government because we would have been doing pre-applicant testing for, you know, I don't four or five years in a basement somewhere just for people, like me- meaning like if you want to be a federal an law enforcement agency, you have to get polygraphed. Um, on your background to make sure there's nothing out there that we you know need to address or could cause concern. Wow. So instead of that, um, we decided we were going to open our own business and kind of move in that direction and do all the work privately because we could pick our schedule and all this. So that was another thing I kind of did on the side, you know, while I was teaching, while I had the construction company. So I had construction company, I was teaching, and I had the polygraph company. Okay, so fast forward to now. <laughs> Polygraph company. Yep. So fast forward to now, I created a new business, and it's called NASDA Forensic Bureau. Um, and it, ha- it does polygraph testing for local agencies, federal agencies. Uh, we also do some private matters as well, attorneys, things of that nature. And then we have a security side as well that does like federal security, building security, things of that nature, protective services. When you say it's lo- so it's local agencies, like someone who's either bringing employees in or like a police yes, yeah. force. Police departments, or... fire departments. Um, currently we, we're... Fire departments? Yep. Yeah, if pre-employment, you know, say so they do the same thing. So it's a pre-employment uh, polygraph that, you know, you would take. Not all departments do it, but there are still a lot that... Do the pre-employment. Chicago Police Department used to do it, uh, but I think they stopped because they couldn't get anybody to pass the test. (laughs) So they were like, we're going to get rid of that requirement. Well, it's interesting because I I haven't heard about this talked about outside of like some talk show games Mm -hmm. or something. Yep. Because people always talk about, you know. Like the Maury, did you do it? (laughs) Or is is, uh, not the father or whatever it is. Jimmy Fallon's doing something more than that, right? Doesn't he have some kind of game or somebody's doing a game? I I see it online, YouTube or something. Yeah, and we don't do do any talk shows or anything like that. But people always question like how, you know, how sure or does it like. The accuracy and validity. Is it like an 80% thing or is it? Uh, 80 to 90%. Okay. It's an investigative tool and that's what people don't understand. Mm. So, you Explain. know, the, the lie detector is me. I'm the human lie detector. I use the instrument to support what I've, the, 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 the information that I've gathered from you. So how you do know? you get to that point where you're able to do that? Because that's fascinating in itself. Like, that's just by doing it. So yeah, I think, I think. So you're school, in the room. Yeah. So, I mean, it's multiple components. So a lot of people think you just come in, you get hooked up and you're done. Well, there's an interview. So there's a pre-test interview where we have a conversation like I'm having with you now, talking about your background, make sure you're physically and psychologically fit to be tested, blah, 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 going over the issue under concern and and all this. So I'm getting all the information ahead of time. And then I just attach the components to, you know, assess your credibility. Is there any, I always heard like, uh, what is it? the tack in the shoe deal? <laughs> uh, no, thinking? I've always heard like, oh, they say now this may just be like some friends that like read something in mm-hmm. Cosmo or something, mm-hmm. but like, you know, oh, they look up to the left and, well, or it, look up to the right. Yeah, I can't that's remember. called neuro linguistic programming. OK, it's not necessarily uh, um, independent of. Uh, lie detection. Right. So what that says is that neurolinguistic programming or brain language programming says that uh, it, in order to access information, you're generally going to look up for visual information. You're going to look to the sides for audio or oral information. And then you ever heard the, the phrase, this is downright important? <laughs> yeah. Well, down and to the right is feeling. It's kinesthetic. Down and to the left is 
internal auditory. So, so when you're talking it's weird to yourself, my eyes are like as I ask you questions. So when so up is visual. So visual. if I say, do you know what a pink giraffe looks like? Oh, then you you will briefly look up and to the right. If you're are you right or left handed? Left handed. Okay. So also your your yours would go the other way. It would, yeah, you would briefly look up and to the left. So if up into the and then to just looking sideways is audible. How does that figure into truthfulness? Or so not? if I ask you now, do you know what a pink giraffe looks like? Yeah. And then I ask you now, do you remember what you had for breakfast this morning? You're going to access the information and in, 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 on a different side. One side is mem- remembered, so you're going to visual remembered, and the other side is constructed. So they're saying that if you access the information from a constructed side, it's highly likely that you're making it up and you're lying, but it doesn't mean that you are because you can remember a lie, right? So if you've convinced yourself of a lie, so again, that that makes me the person in the room that has to determine if you're remembering a lie or you're making something up now and you're lying to me. And if, and if I had like a pink giraffe for dinner, (laughs) Right. <laughs> then it gets even more crazy. Yeah. Whoa. This so. is, I didn't even expect. I, cause I didn't know what you meant. I didn't know if it was like a security thing. Well, as, well like I didn't. Know so if now like, we're we're you ran the door at the Roxy or something. Right. Well, I didn't well, know what it meant. Right. We're private contractors for the federal government. We have active federal contracts, so we work for the federal courts, uh, the federal bureau of prisons, and the local courts as well. So that is so far away from the yeah. arts. Yep. It's so crazy. Now, what makes you stay in both realms like um, that? COVID actually pushed me deeper into the defense side because I couldn't do art. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do singing and dancing. So I says, well, this thing that I only do twice a week, I'm going to now make that a thing. Yeah. So I created another company. Now, <laughs> what that. company is that? Can that's we talk? The, that's NAS, the Forensic Bureau. NAS. So, How do you NAS spell that? It's my last name backwards. So, because <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. Terry Hudson Investigations and all those types of companies were that those names were taken. So I went, <sighs> okay, you know, again, in in the world of the arts, we create. I know how to design a show to make you feel a certain way or a piece or whatever. Right. So I needed to make sure that the company that I designed, when we began to apply for federal contracts, looked like. Yeah, you know, look legit. Does that yeah. make sense? So you know, NFB, NASA Forensic Bureau. I mean, it's got the. You're like, okay, yeah. Do you want to work with NASA Forensic Bureau or Mike Jones Investigations? <laughs> you know what I mean? Smart. Yeah. That's so, smart. wow, that's a whole other other world. Yeah. As how busy does that keep you? Well, I've been doing that. Uh, well, I was doing that full time yeah. when. COVID hit. Now I'm transitioning back into the performing arts. And, and I was going to say, because now that, that life is. Yeah. And, and I have, so I have a staff in that company too, who can run the polygraph test. So it's your security. company. It's my company. Wow. Yes. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. So. Well, that, that was, that, how about that for a sideline folks? <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. I didn't see that coming. All right. So then when we get, uh, let, let's, let's get back to the to, to performing arts doctor. So yep. phase one, was uh, you know what was the first what would you say the first sort of event or i don't know that there was i mean i know it makes sense to talk about it in a like a linear and stack approach but i don't know that this was that um i do recall that when i started judging competitions and things of that nature one of my former colleagues uh actually they're a colleague now said something to the effect of uh well i don't what did he say i don't i don't sell myself or something what what do you say i don't i can't remember exactly what he said but whatever he said i went that doesn't make sense to me because the best seller of you is you you know um oh he said he didn't self promote that's what he told me <laughs> And, and i went well i don't understand why you don't because how do you get more gigs Nobody knows who you are, right? <laughs> you know, mm. um, and I, I think that was the beginning because I it was all about me, 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 and then I had this like epiphany, and I went, I I want more people to be involved in this. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about this organization, this monster, this beast. So I hired all these people. Well, I have five instructors now. We call them instructors. They're my assistants. Yeah. Um, I hired them all and they all have amazing backgrounds to compensate also for the things that I don't know also. Uh, like Carol's been teaching since she was a you know teenager. 
you know. Um, so I, at some point realized that I, I'm never going to know everything. So I wanted to make sure that I at least, um, became resourceful and attached myself to things, events, and organizations that helped me help you. So when I go and work with a group, for example, they may pay me for their, you know, to design a show or whatever it is. Um, they don't just get me, they get a team. And I can, I can bounce this off of people who are in the industry doing that thing. So the whole concept evolved into this. How do we make the handshake with from the pre-professional artist to the professional world? Um, and I think the creating the team for me was what did it. So it, it kind of shifted from self-promotion to, you know, I'm going to promote my team and the concept that we have out there. Because it's not, I mean, yeah, it's about me, but it's about me helping you. You know. Yeah. So wait a minute. When you when you're first thinking about it, are you th- were you thinking about just okay? We're, this is going to be a home base. I'm gonna I'm gonna work out of some facility for a week long course, or uh, you know, how did it build? How what was it? What was the starting kind of maybe plan or guesswork? It, and then what? How did it become what it is now? I think because and this is where the worlds collide. So the my you know my world. Uh, in the defense side, so the the credibility assessment, I think that had a big impact on why I created the company because I wanted people to look and say this is legit. So creating legitimacy. So it wasn't wasn't that it needed to be a specific place, but it's like um, like McDonald's advertises all the time. So we have our logos and all that. It's it's more of a concept, a thing, and people know here we can reference this. It's almost like a virtual school. Um, to do whatever, being teaching teachers, teaching students, and you know, um, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> well, it, it's sort of like I, I was wondering, you know, you, you think I, I guess because I'm, I'm trying to wrap my brain around, you know, what it is and how it got there. I guess, in, in like in my mind, the first thing you thought is, okay, let's let's look for five students that that need this, and, and okay, let's we'll we'll gather here oh, in this well, hall for now, phase one right here locally and I, I think working with so many schools and seeing that the people like seeing that they kind of went nowhere afterwards was the kind of my reason for creating this company so for the the artists or pre-professional artists uh who wants to go on and continue their craft i felt like there was no place for them to go to go okay now what's next you know mm-hmm. well this is what's next and then in an odd way, I think I now am creating the opportunities yeah. <laughs> that, that those pre-professional artists will, will push them into the professional realm. It's cool that you and I will be somewhat working together here and there. I'm honored to be a part of your program, but it's just so funny that that's what you're all about. And, and what I do is called after the craft. Right. And it came over the last four years because I, what I started to notice is that, okay, if I went to a school and I talked to a group of kids there would be two kids, maybe three, that would want a deep dive. Right. And they'd either have questions for their teacher that would come to me later or they'd right. ask me before I left and things like that. And then I started noticing people in the professional world either causing problems or trying to react to problems right. that had nothing to do with training and music mm-hmm. and the arts. It had everything to do with mindset and personality, mm-hmm. ego, things like yep. that. You know, and and it it started off with me. I, I, the only reason I figured this out, by the way, mm-hmm. I, I didn't, I probably wasn't smart enough to, to deep dive the way you did, but my first mentors were all like over 50 and it was okay. in, in a musical group. Not only were they over 50, but they'd been retired for like 13 years and then they came back. Okay. So when they came back they were building from the fundamentals of music and band work and all mm-hmm. that stuff. So I'm learning that. And all I saw was joy Mm-hmm. So happy to be doing it again mm-hmm. and no ego because these guys weren't 18, 20. They didn't care right. about applause or who the crowd liked mm-hmm. more. They they were so far past that. Yep. So when I was like 13 learning this stuff, you know, from these guys that were basically like uncles to me because they okay. went through my dad, um, uh, ego was never a part of it, you know? So I, st- it took me a while. I like, I can't even understand when people start losing it. Or right, ego and stuff like when that gets in the way. Yeah, well, it's character development. You yeah, know? and so, it, but it's so funny how that's it's just turned into a thing for me, just because it's it's become a conversation point. Mm-hmm. And then I've had to deal with egos in right. my own workplace and start cutting people, you know, off when I see, oh, this is 
not helping the product. Right. right. I don't mind a little, I don't know how you feel about this. I don't mind a little bit of it, even if it's a little past what I would enjoy mm -hmm. or consider suitable. But when I see it, it could ruin the product. Yeah. And, and sometimes it may not even be what people see on stage, but sometimes it may be the moral, uh, the, the band morale that's right. affected or a group of morale. I, th I think it's tricky for someone who suddenly is put in this world where they're being applauded right after they do their thing. That could either be something you take graciously or something mm -hmm. that gets in your head. Right. And unfortunately, I've seen it get in people's heads a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. And have you ever touched on anything like that? Or have you seen the monsters and you've had to, you know, kind of say, okay, wait a minute, let's not let, you know. Well, um, the, I won't say any names, sure, but sure. I've met some, you know, some stars uh, that I just, I wasn't impressed with. And I just thought, I don't care what you've done in this world. Right. I do not want to associate with you. Yeah. And what I thought that person was, wasn't, it was, it's all fake. It's and the worst coming, feeling coming from a, a, a human lie detector. You know, I read people for a living. So dealing with those people and going, you're not who the world thinks you are, yeah. you know, and then, and then trying to address that in, you know, to these young kids now and say, Hey, here's, here's the reality. Here's what the reality can be. Here's what it is for some people. And here's how you can create your own so that there's a balance. So you, you, you not fake, <laughs> you know, something kind of almost gut wrenching and, and it, it kind of, a little heartbreaking, especially when someone you, even if it's yeah. not someone you're an intense fan of, but right. I've met some celebrities as well. Yeah. And some just surprise me with their kindness and how yeah. great they are. And others, I just feel like, oh, no. Yeah. What? Well, then, so, I, you know, I also employ, um, you know, music teachers, performers, all this throughout the country to come and judge competitions and things of that nature. And I've worked for other schools where I wasn't hiring anyone, but I was hired in. And even even at that level, just the, it, it was, uh, I don't know, I, I haven't had very many uh, people that I didn't hire that I was a fan of based on the content of their character when I met them. Like you can, you can design a great show, but you're not a good person. You know what I mean? <laughs> How far in do you, like, are you five minutes in and then you can see like, Oh, there's something. Cause sometimes I feel like there's a certain it's a, it's tell. A, it's a feeling. Yeah. It's a feeling. I think uh, you know? every once in a while I get, they'll, they'll be the, it's, it's, Oh, this is perfect. And then there's a phrase. Yeah. There's some little thing that I can, now I can identify it. Like, Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, I think that little space, of that person yeah. is that entire person. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I mean, there's certain things that, like, you know, because people always ask, "Are you always on? Are you always trying to see if people are lying?" Well, everybody lies, right? That's the, sure. the thing. Okay. You know, how how's your day going? Good. Well, your day's not going good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and and we do that. <laughs> I don't know why that's spit because yeah. that, so you could see it all. Yeah. You gave me a spit take yeah. because you're right. Yeah. There's something. <laughs> <laughs> so oh man you could be talking to me and like ah no he's been backed up all day i bet there's yeah. something you know he, yeah he, 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 right. pasta didn't agree with him right and it's, by the it, way it's, I, I'm, I'm doing fine <laughs> yeah so it's it's a it's it's more of a goes to a feeling almost <laughs> it's yeah. just funny to think of saying like are you okay yeah fine to someone like you who right. can like really read it all and it's just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, you're will you, will okay. you <laughs> Would you would you say that? Would you be like nah. no? Or I don't. it's just inside. I, when I, the younger me, the younger me, you would call you out. But how you that, doing? I'm fine. That's how you lose no, you, friends. No, you're not. No, you're not. You feel you good know. about this? Yeah, I feel good. No, no, mm -hmm. you don't. Oh so no! When I'm out meeting ladies, I don't start with, "Hey, I'm a professional interrogator, by the way." You know? <laughs> no, what do you do? I'm a school yeah, teacher. I'm a music teacher. Oh man! Well, hey, you must be great at like poker. I would assume. I don't like poker. poker yeah. Okay. Now tell me, are you not a gambling just, guy? Well, I'm a gambling guy. Oh, you I just are? don't like poker. I like slot machines. That's oh, okay, fun. Okay. I like the randomness of it. Oh, you nice. Know? Because because I am, I have to read people, and there's there's a structure to that. I think the randomness of like a gambling machine is awesome for me because I don't know what's going to happen. <sighs> That's smart. You know, yeah. random number generators. You know, it's funny because people have. I'll perform a lot of um, casinos and stuff, and people mm -hmm. would ask me. Oh, oh man! Once as soon as you're done, you got to get on the boat or whatever. Uh -huh. it is. I, you know, I think it started off being a boat. Now that I think about yep, it. Yep, it was. My mindset was always, you know, I'm a, I'm trying to be a full time musician. Yeah. My whole life 
is a gamble. I don't need... <laughs> right, right. Well, so it never called out to me just because I feel like I've been yeah. rolling the dice all my life to get here. You yeah. know? Does that make sense? No, I, I get yeah. that. I get that. Yeah. And that's kind of how the Performing Arts Doctor came about. It's like, how do I create consistency in this world and consistent work? Yeah. Not only for me, but for others who want to do this thing, you know? That's a tricky thing, too, because I've noticed, you know, you can, you can be a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, you get your, your degree, and then you're going to most likely find work mm -hmm. you know especially if you do well and you're reputable right you know but you can be the best performer in the world and go through all the training do what you're going to do and you're uh you're buying a lotto ticket for some mm -hmm. people because I, I I'm, I'm glad that i'm where i am yeah i know a lot of people just as good if not better who aren't working at all right you know? it's so scary man yeah you know but but for you to give this lifeline all right now i want to really mm -hmm. get into the right. nuts of nuts and bolts of, mm -hmm. of, of the performing arts doctor PerformingArtsDoctor.com. Look it up, my friends. So, okay, so when you're doing this, now tell me what the machine is because, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm honored to be a part mm -hmm. of it, but as I look online, I'm still trying to figure yeah. it out. What I'm mm -hmm. aware of, mm -hmm. I'm aware that you have, you know, this summer, you know, that I know of, mm -hmm. there are three... Like Intensives, yeah, camps. So it's call, basically a okay. performing and, and arts camp. So now... For that, like how 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 are students aware of that? Are are, are you going to schools or how? Do so as we're so we travel. So I get hired. Like for example, this weekend I'll be in Quincy, Illinois, uh, judging a competition, a show choir competition, um, and uh, at that contest, the top performers of the day will receive a uh, you know sc partial scholarship to the intensive. Excuse me. Yep. And uh, so all the groups that I've worked with throughout the year. When I go and I work with them, like I do cleaning sessions, for example, I come in and I take what you have and I elevate it. Okay, I see what you have. I see what you want it to be. This is not there yet. Here's how to get there. And then we do it right then and there. At those events, I'm also sharing, hey, this is what we're doing this summer. If you're interested in a career in dance, if you're interested in a career in singing, if you're interested in a career in uh, performing for a, a Broadway or, you know, Disneyland or a, a um, cruise ships or Great America, this is for you. It's an investment in you where you can come in and work with industry professionals to hone your craft, hone your skills. So Wow. And then... How many, like, do you see, because it seems like people are signing up for this, yep. you get, so are you seeing pretty fast responses or is it the kind of thing it's, where, because it, it's such an interesting concept, but it might be mm -hmm. alien to some people. So as I'm thinking as you're doing that, are you, are you, is it a two week process? Is it a month? Is it a lot of questions or? Um, I think all the questions are answered, like on the website, right essentially, the with frequently asked questions. Um, it's more of a I'm signing people up one at a time type of deal because it's a high ticket item. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, we've never done it before at this level. Um, so it's a new idea, new concept. This, like what you're doing. This it's summer intensive. So tell yeah. me what, what does it entail? You know, so kids sign so up. It's, it's a week. So for example, so once, once you sign up, you'll decide, Hey, do I want to dance? Do I want to uh, sing all week or do I want to sing and dance all week? So they pick a major. Okay. So say you pick a dance major, you come in and throughout the week, all your core classes, just like in college would be based on dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we also have all the master classes, so on and so forth for each major. Um, and then it also includes the fun day cause it's kids 13 to 17, 18. So junior high, high school kids. So one fun day, they're also staying in oh, villas. Oh, so they don't go. I, so they don't go nuts. So right. Can, right. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of. I mean, we're in beautiful places, so sure. we gotta have a fun day. Um, the, the one thing that sets it apart from normal camps of this nature is they're gonna be staying in like Airbnb style villas. Uh, so that's pretty cool versus, you know, um, some college campus. Usually it's in a dorm room, some, you know, dorm rooms or uh, an actual campsite where you're in cabins. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 pretty neat. That's cool. And, and so your perfect candidate is somebody that wants to get into anything, any aspect yep. of it, whether it's a or band or if they're or in it already. Or, so, for example, what I tell a lot of the schools that I go to, I say, hey, Give me your, your best performer or your weakest performer. Send them here because it's going to be an investment in your program. When they come back, they're going to be better and they're going to have knowledge and skills to help elevate your program and themselves, obviously. Wow. And what is, what is, what is a hopeful goal for this? Like, how would you like, 
multiple programs like well, year I, all know, year round? Well, I or? think I think based on what we're seeing now with registration and enrollment, um, I think it's a thing that people want to do every year, and that we can offer additional campuses. So you know, next level summer intensive twenty twenty three may be in France, or you know. So um, obviously we didn't look at the international side this year because of COVID restrictions and things of that nature. But ultimately, I'd like to have not only stateside events, but um, international events as well and create that experience for that person. So it's going to give even like uh, um, I would say like our underprivileged schools. You know, if they want to sign someone up and say, hey, I want to send two kids that might not ever get an opportunity to do this, you know. Yeah. This is this is it's going to create that's, that that's thing. Great. I don't know if you do you follow Steve Harvey. N- not a, I mean I, I love okay. him. There, but there was a there was a thing he said, and it was one of his motivational talks or something. I don't know even know if it was a motivational talk, but I heard him say it, and he says, he says I remember my first time in first class on a on an airplane. He says it was awesome. You know, I got leg room, blah blah blah, all the, and I'll spare the details. But he goes, the thing about first class is that once you leave it, you're always trying to get back to first class. So if we can create that first class experience for these kids that may not ever, you know, may not have ever been exposed to this thing, then the hope is that because they experience the, you know, the intensives with us over the summer and they learned and they meet you guys and all this, that they now have a, a first class uh, image that they're going to continue to work back to wow. in life, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's very cool. Wow. So then uh, let, let's walk through part of the program. Let's, you know, let's, let's say, let's say you have a singer mm-hmm. come on and, um, you know, now it sounds to me like they can kind of pick their curriculum a little bit. So when they're coming in, a singer signs up, what, you know, l- let's pretend, you know, let's, let's just make mm-hmm. up a kid who's mm-hmm. figured out their curriculum. Okay. Uh, walk me through, you know, Melissa Stewart's, <laughs> right. <laughs> what she might experience. You know, so let's say, what do they have to prep before? They don't have to prep anything because right. so the, the shows that, so at the end of the day, so the, con, the, the intensives in, in a performance. Okay. Um, so I, everybody dis- involved, is everybody involved in a big variety show, basically. Okay. Um, I will design what that looks like based on registration because we may have a dance camp, like a dance heavy camp, or we may have a singer heavy camp or a singer dancer heavy camp. Um, so we will write that and we have an, a, a retreat at the end of this month with my staff. So we'll write and design what that looks like based on registration. So when you come in your, your vocal session, you're learning the music that I'm writing or designing for specifically for Wait, that. Camp. Hold on a second. So we're, let's see if we're doing the math here. Uh, one, so it, what, like two months before the program, that's yep. awesome. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll have the scope of what you have to deal with and then, yep. And then you'll spend that two months creating. I, I can do it in my sleep. Yeah. So, all right. That's I, cool. I create, I kind of create, um, if, if you ever see me do choreography work and the girls will tell you this, um, I have my concepts in mind that I want to use. Um, and I guess I can talk more about how that evolved. Um, but I, I teach from the concepts. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I know what needs to happen where. Okay. Um, so let's, let me give you an example. Yeah. So, uh, when I first start choreographing, and this is pretty cool, I had, I had sheet music. You're familiar with that. And I, I would write the choreography notes into the music. Okay. So then I know, okay, double jazz hand clap here, pirouette there, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Nice. Well, the problem is if something didn't work, I didn't know how to change it. Cause I wrote it there. I got to do what I wrote. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I says, got it. I'm going to fix this. So I went, moved to sticky notes and I would put like the sequences that I wanted to use on the sticky notes. And I went, okay, if it doesn't work, I can just move it to a different area, right? You know, pick it up, you know, I'm not stuck now. Um, so that was the next thing I did. And then I went, okay, well, I don't even remember what some of these, you know, after designing, I wouldn't remember what the sequence is that I thought I needed to teach. So I went, all right, that's too hard to remember. And I can't read my writing. So I started writing better <laughs> and giving myself better wow. examples. Because when you're in front of a group, you're going to be like, oh, what's this? You know? Um, so then I says, okay. So then I, after I started doing my research and really delving into the stylistic uh, choices and things of that nature, um, I, I stepped back and said, okay, I'm going to do conceptual choreography, which means I'm not writing anything down. 
I'm not writing anything in my notes or anything. I'm writing down or referencing things that already exist. So like the Lindy hop is the basis of almost all dance. Mm -hmm. So I know what that is and I know how to modify it for whatever purposes, whatever visual effect I'm going after. Wow. So, so essentially, so when I'm, when I'm in front of a group, I have the concept in mind and based on whatever the style of the music is, and I know how to get to and away, or at least I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do I get to and away from the moments that I know need to be in this show. So similar to that, I'll design a show based on, again, um, you know, the registration at each location, and then we'll kind of go from there. Here's what's interesting to me. Um, because you work with the multiple ages, the the, the gap, mm -hmm. what, what is it, 13 to 18? Junior high to high school, yep. So what's interesting to me about that gap mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, the last thing I did was talk to some second graders, I okay. think, right? Yep. So I'm dealing with concepts, music, singing, you know, and mm -hmm. then, you know, any questions, first questions, do you like hel helicopters, you right, know, right. and you know what you're dealing mm -hmm. with at that age, right? right? And you're trying to swing them back around. Now, when I work with 12 to 13 year olds, or let, yeah, let's say 12 to 14, but I feel like 12 to 13 year olds, mm -hmm. they're, they're more or less into this, they're, they're getting the basic concepts of like a choir thing. Mm -hmm. You might get that one person that oh, okay, wow, well, this person, right. you know. But for the most part, it's 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 definitely in between what you know a sophomore in high school and that little kid who just wants to know if I like helicopters, right? Right. And then as I was getting into more um, training with like a sixteen to eighteen year olds, mm -hmm. well, then you saw you know some of these people had been taking major lessons, right? So it was easy for me because I was only on this group, then that group, and that group, right? Right. And I easily you could tell. Mm -hmm. If I don't get it, I'll get right. it five minutes in with what they're giving right. me back. So when you're doing something like this where you're building a show, that that's an interesting gap because mm -hmm. there could be quite a bit of difference between the 13 or 14-year-old and the 18-year-old. And when mm -hmm. you're creating that, that must be tricky to create the co a cohesive piece that allows them all to live in that space. You know what I mean? Right um, next to each other. Well, all right, well, and I so the best way to... I guess address that would be when I like, like Carol would say, she says she's worked with multiple choreographers her whole life. She enjoys working with me because I don't design choreography for me. I design choreography for the people in front of me. So I meet them where they're at and I push them a little bit. Yeah. So again, when I'm thinking conceptually, I know the effect that I want and I know the level of talent I'm dealing with. So in this case, the people who are coming in, they'll actually audition when they get to the site and we'll place them okay accordingly so again we don't have you know the 12 year dancer with the person who doesn't know how to walk down a hall you know perfect yeah because that's um, what i was so, thinking of i was thinking of the 18 year old that yep. may suddenly maybe outnumbers mm -hmm. the 14 year olds and then trying to feel like oh what am i or right. The 14 year old who's with the 18 year old right. that might be getting intimidated. So that balance seems yeah. so tricky. I, I have the luxury of being able to go mm -hmm. group for, with group, you know? Yeah. So that's fascinating, you know? So, yeah. But then again, I guess it, that leads to the brilliance of you because you're able to, to build the same way somebody would just build a Broadway play right. and go, know who they're casting. This. You know, a lot of the groups, no, that's my term. Hey, try this. Here we go. <laughs> how extensive when, once they land, how extensive is that? Um, you know, sort of, I, I guess we'll call it an audition for the show sort of process. So you, you get them there. Is that like day one? Uh, it'll be day two. Most likely day one is really check-in. It's that Sunday. Sure. So check-in, meet and greet, all that. And yeah. then the next day, it's not too intense. It's not scary, um, but there's a series of things just, uh, of of sequences that they'll go through or be taught uh, that'll help us determine where they're at. Man, that's so cool. That's so cool. And so, then at the end, I mean, the satisfaction of seeing the progress of the mm -hmm. students, seeing how happy they are with the with what they've done, yep. and then the progress. I mean, the uh, also just being able to see something you've created come to life at the end of the week as mm -hmm. well. Like that is as rewarding as it gets mm -hmm. like all it, it clicks like every box, right? Yep. You know, that, yep. that's really fascinating stuff, man. Yep. So this will be the, the first year that this is happening. Yes. For the, um, but man, who only knows sky's yeah. the limit yep. where you're heading after that, you know? Well, and, and the interesting thing is, so, um, 
you know, every summer in prior, mostly prior to when COVID started, I'd be out and I teach two to 20 groups. It depends on the, the summer and what, what I'm going. Um, and they'd have show choir camps, for example. So I kind of got the idea from there where that gathering is where they learn their show for the year. They learn the choreography, they learn the vocals, they learn, you know, the stagecraft that's involved. And then they take that and they work on cleaning that throughout the year and they compete with it. So it's a similar concept, but it's just broken out now so that we can include dancers and we can include people who don't want to dance, who want to just sing. So we come together, we create a show, but it's a custom show for you. Um, And then... They don't go and compete or anything with it, but whatever they learn there, they can take back to their school and say, Hey, listen, I got these cool sequences I learned that we can use here. Yeah. You know, you're um, making little Terry's everywhere yeah. <laughs> is what you're doing. You're filling the country with small Terry's, you know, you're arming them, you know, so, and they don't have to go to the library. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So they have, you know, it's, it's creating a resource for them and, yeah. and, and uh, you know, help them help themselves. And again, it's cool that you don't have that kind of um, the ego and the thing that comes with that, you know, because I've seen people who say that they're going to teach, mm-hmm. but I, unfortunately I've seen people use it as, <laughs> I've seen people use it as a platform mm-hmm. to just show off and yeah. almost outshine their own students. Oh gosh. I, yeah. I mean, too, too many times I've to al- almost to where it's a disgusting level Yeah, to where I, I'm ready to just say, you leave the bill. This is yeah. terrible what you're doing. It's bad for the kids morale. Mm-hmm. It's, I, oh, the, I can still see the faces mm-hmm. on these kids when it happens. And they're suddenly mm-hmm. shown up by someone who has 20 years more experience than right. them. And supposedly these kids are there to teach them or yeah. to be taught by them. And, uh, you know, so it's great yeah. that you, you have this, this demeanor and this attitude, but man, I, I just, I'm, I'm, you're, you are a lot to process, <laughs> you know, you're a lot to process. What is the ultimate goal moving forward now? Because you seem like from a very young age, you <laughs> never stop building, building, building. Yeah, so I don't what think is... I'll ever stop building. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, the concept, at least for the performing arts company, yeah. is ultimately I think we want to house um, like a, our own internal, and not for lack of better terms, a theater group um, at some point um, where you come to a venue and this is the show. So, that you know, we, you know. Wow. Um, now, would that be the kind of thing where it's similar to what you're doing with the um we would it would be more production based i think okay so an actual theater company yes. that's yeah yeah oh no so, kidding yeah so i wrote a musical a couple years ago of based on the se- <laughs> based on the second book of alice in wonderland through the looking glass and what alice found there and so that would be one of the productions that i would actually start with when we move to the production side the reason I did that was, well, two, it was twofold. One, I couldn't get the rights for uh, the Lorax because <laughs> I wanted to make that a musical, <laughs> but I couldn't get it. And I know the people, you know, in Disney, but it's it's a uh, Dr. Do. Seuss stuff. Okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to remember um, how that one. Yeah. Um, be great. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm, I haven't given up on it, but I wrote my <laughs> own musical because I couldn't get the rights to that. And I said, okay, let's just try this. And, 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 uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. So I think that's the direction we're going to move in. Why did I move in that direction? It's because I work with so many groups over the past 20 years and some of them, once I teach a show, the, the production team knows how to maintain the work that I give, gave them. Some of them, you know, some of the, the teachers that are right out of school and things that I give them a show and they can't maintain it. So it's worse when I come back. Oh, you know, so this was and these it's are, frustrating. These are these are traveling. The, the, I'm primarily talking about the show choirs okay. um, with the dance studios that I work with. I'll also do productions with them where they're like uh, it's a, the musical theater pieces. Um they generally can maintain what I've given them because they're in actual training and classes and mm-hmm. such. Um, in the show choir world, I don't know that, at least from what I've seen over the years, there's not any really intense training to help support the kids throughout the year. It's more fix your arm, fix this, fix that. Yeah. So that's why in the dance world now we can go back to the fundamentals. So my team comes in and we provide the the, the gap, that gap training. Um, that they're missing in their normal classes. So when they come in, like for example, for a, a, just say it's a, just a show choir camp to learn their show, Carol or one of the other girls will 
teach them fundamentals without them really knowing that these are the things you're going to need. Because if I can teach you core control, it's going to clean up your entire show. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you don't have that, you know, uh, as one of the directors, I think over at IYB said, she says, it's about, you know, how many light bulbs on the Christmas tree are on. And you can tell through the fundamentals, the core control, and you, you can say, oh, yep, you got a lot of lights out, right? <laughs> wow. um, so that's fascinating. So, so it makes me wonder if it makes me wonder if an ultimate goal might even be you have the space. There's a production company mm-hmm. attached to it. You have, people know, though, there's a destination for shows. Mm-hmm. But then does that become the uh, the place where the kids are? Suddenly, suddenly they're not going to multiple cities. Maybe there's a there's a year where four or five times a year the intensive is happening at your space. It would be in and my they're, space. Ultimately. They're coming to you. They're housed there. So they're, I, I think part of the concept because so I, I managed auditoriums for public schools as well and rental spaces. And so part of the, the concept would be have a multi-use space that I can rent out and generate revenue when we're not using it. Mm. So, you know, for whatever, you know, weddings, shows, you know, um, because I have the back end, I wrote the manuals for the schools, but I based that manual on the research that I did from the big, you know, Airy Crown Theater and all this. So you worked at Airy Crown Theater? No, no, no. Oh, I but, did the research. Oh, I see. To see how they work, how those venues work, how yeah. they function. I made the phone calls. I visited the sites, and then I says, okay. And then I go back to these school districts, who's you know, you know, they have a five million dollar theater, you know, or, or whatever. And I say, okay, here's your operation plan, and this is what's happening professionally, and this is this is how it works in wow. real life. Um, so I think I think the performing arts doctor, in addition to um, event management and training, uh, ultimately will be more focused on production, the production side as well. Man, uh, I, was, to- I look forward to because I well, first off, I'm, I'm again, I'm honored to be a part of a, a few of the programs. Um, but I, not only can I not wait to see the machine in action. Mm-hmm. But I look forward to seeing, I, I know that I can't be around because of my schedule for mm-hmm. the performance, but I'm looking forward to someday seeing something you wrote yeah. and, and directed or whatever on a stage. Like, I really want to see that. I'm really curious mm-hmm. because I, I feel like I've learned so much about you now. I can't wait to see that, even if it has to be on YouTube form yeah. or something. But I, 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 I want to know more about, we're going to have to have you back on just as composer yeah. writer and talk about that <laughs> right. there's so many all, parts there's of you. so many yeah and i'd love to like delve yeah. into that and yeah. with who you are and your style and what yeah. you love and where you you know oh, here's something real quick though mm-hmm. uh favorite broadway production my favorite top one? three top three how about that it makes it easier um, doesn't it? there's there's so many okay <laughs> it's tough i would say let's see aladdin probably is up there we uh, had the original Aladdin right in this room sitting at the chair you know? because huh. he now lives in Evanston. Oh, okay. Uh, wow, Jacob. that's cool. Yeah, he, he, was, and, uh, he, he still has to mm-hmm. tour the world as Aladdin. Okay. And he was doing some of the Drury Lane out here, and now he's, he's set up shop here. But the original guy okay. from the original wow. production that's cool. was sitting right where you... <laughs> um, I would say probably my next one would be Jersey Boys. I just absolutely love that show. Yeah. You know, and uh, well, a third would probably be the original Wicked that was in Chicago. I had friends in the show. So, oh, um, the original one. I I haven't seen it since then. That's why I say the original one. <laughs> um, I, I like it. It's so weird, right? Because there are some have you and, and then Chicago is such a great small theater mm-hmm. town as well. Like yeah. I'm surprised that, you know, I, Oh, I feel bad. I can't maybe lights out or something. Anyway, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've mm-hmm. seen some small productions okay. and because of that, the gamut of my favorites runs from like, I really loved the lion King a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's I thought, classic. Yeah. I thought that was pretty fantastic. Yeah. But then, uh, my second favorite is the color purple. Okay. Which I saw in a much smaller theater. Gotcha. In the city. Have you, have you seen Hamilton? What did you, you think know what? of Hamilton? Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Hamilton actually stumps most of it. Hamilton to me is in another universe. For for me, it was you know. I was there I was intrigued by the 
technical side. I wasn't a big fan of the actual music. Really? I, I liked I liked the way they. I, I guess what I would say. Mm-hmm. A, a lo- well, their talent mm-hmm. and the talent they were able to present in yeah. sort of a different format mm-hmm. with more of a hip hop style and yeah. everything. I thought that was fantastic. I'd never seen anything like that to okay. that level. Um, but I I thought the writing was very smart mm-hmm. but the technical end now yeah. i'm gonna have him on eventually yeah. the, a buddy of mine tom hipskin hey tom um who who played on hamilton okay and he literally what he told me is that every other day there was a technical nightmare like it oh, i'm is, sure it was so many moving parts and yep. so oh man yeah so yeah that stuff's intriguing to me they so. really did something interesting with yeah. that yeah and yeah. delving and, the choreography with the technical yeah oh man and, and to make it look so simple but yeah to know the back end and know how complex it is is pretty exciting so it's so. almost it, it in, in some ways for me it theatrically um created its own genre mm-hmm. so it almost is in a different category yeah. when i say my favorites and then there's hamilton right. it's that thing right. over there you know it's it's really weird yeah it's almost like asking me like what what are my like three top you know pizza joints but yeah. then where where's what kind of indian food do i like right, it's like a right. whole well, right yeah and, yeah, I, and I think even bringing up those shows i think that's part of the motivation to move and t- to production side because it's like okay i've seen a lay miz at thousand times and it's not going anywhere right yeah. so let's let's get throw our hat in the ring oh know? man and, i'm gonna be know. talking to you so. well you've got something just heading toward broadway i'm going to be mm-hmm. talking to you and that's going to be next just because yep. it doesn't seem like there's anything you can't do <laughs> you know and i and i and it's funny because i think i've never met anybody who seems like they are so passion forward. It, it just mm-hmm. seems like you found some way to create a marriage between your passion and the information, you know, mm-hmm. the passion and the knowledge. And unfortunately, I think we run into a lot of people that are all knowledge and less right. passion, all passion, less knowledge, right. you know, right. And you have somehow found this hat trick of keeping those things in perfect step with each other. Yeah. And I think it's fascinating. I think it's one of the most, un- I've had, so many artists on this mm-hmm. thing, but you've given me a perspective I have not seen yeah. before, and it's it's really interesting. I'm so glad everybody got to meet you now. Uh, I'm so glad you guys mm-hmm. know him now. Seriously, uh, is there anything besides a performingartsdoctor.com you would like to push right here and now, or is that that? No, I think that's the thing right now. So yeah, and anything know. else you'd like to tell potential folks about the performing arts doctor? Or uh, we've said a lot. Yeah, I think we've they, said a lot. Yeah. I think. I think. I mean. I can go on for hours with, you know, <laughs> you know, what the, like the etiology of it and, and all that. But I think the important thing to note now is that, um, we're, you know, in a place where we can provide the training, we can provide, we can run the events, we can produce, I mean, it, it it's almost unbelievable because we do so much. Yeah. Um, but I think again, it was the, the concept behind building the company was a place to house all this knowledge and make sure we're still using it, you know, effectively, you know, okay, we have this division, that division, this, you know, so, yeah. and, and, and how do you bring all that in and how do you spread the information so that it doesn't get lost? You know, how do you disseminate that to the future artists and yeah. future tech directors and, you know, um, you you're know. going to be the gift that keeps on giving. So folks, you know, gift number one, if you're not even in the arts or if you're, if this doesn't apply to you, you know, this particular business, uh, you've been given the gift of this story because this guy is a fascinating dude. Thank you. Anyone else out there that falls under the category of what this is, I think you guys need to do it obviously because we can all tell how amazing it is and what you've put into it. But it also seems like I suddenly wish I were a kid again because to be on the ground floor of someone who's so who's learning so quickly and and constantly building what you do Mm -hmm. it's it's just not only are they are kids going to be able to learn where they need to go and what they need to do they're going to learn perspective and they're constantly going to see something that's growing because it's run by a person who seems to be driven by growth and Mm -hmm. i think that's one of the most impressive things it's a tribute to who you. you are and what you've done and i'm proud to be across from you at the table man it's it's really you're better than i even thought and i was already i had some pretty <laughs> lofty 
thoughts when I looked at the website. Okay. But now, you know, so thank you for spending your time here. You're welcome. Thank Seriously. you for having me. Hey. Looking forward to working with oh. you uh, here in the future. I, I hope I can hang, man. Yep. You yep. know, you got this. Jeez. <laughs> what I've just realized, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to put my best lecture foot forward. And then I think I may not go back because this guy is going to hear everything I said and say, yeah. I could do that 10 times better. Give me a week. (laughs) (laughs) You're a one man show. I love what you are. I love your drive. Um, And I'm, I'm, I'm a fan and anything I can do to promote what you do in any aspect of what I do, I I'm, I'm on board and that's purely because I believe in it. I think, Mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. You know, I've been Mm -hmm. trying to do, uh, uh, what you're doing in a, in a way, in a small corner, in a small niche Mm -hmm. and to see somebody do it, such a grandiose way and to cover so many bases yeah um it makes me feel like less of a person <laughs> than i <laughs> it just but it, i'm in awe of it and uh, man i'm for it feels weird to say i'm proud of you but you know you're taking you. you're taking your love and your arts and basic good humanity to a different level man and good for you for that that's amazing folks now you know him i know you love him now i know you did if you didn't know him before this you know him now you love him so uh there you go look for the performing arts and uh just hey i'm glad you guys hung out with us again all of you folks i appreciate you you guys are so much fun keep talking to me keep hiring me whatever you're doing to contact me i love it all you guys are a blast um say goodbye to the fine folks bye Thank you for spending yeah, time. Thank you. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, there you go. So have a great month, have a great week, have a great day. Go out and find your smile. And there you have it. How was that, man? Great. <laughs> You're a natural. I want to start asking you dance tips right now, and right. I don't even have any choreography. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Welcome to my life so far. You think by now I'd be a star. I may be long-winded, but hey, there's just so much I have to say. Maybe lick your lips when you're hungry, maybe drop your head when you're sorry, maybe shake a bit when you're worried, that's just...